Sorry, well, I was simplifying for him on how to fade that in and out for your close-up. Okay. Um, I'm just going to start the clock up once you start going, just so you have a point of reference of where things are. Absolutely. And just let it roll. You know what okay. I mean? If you, if you do a one-hour show at about an hour, go, yeah, I had fun, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. And then jump into the next one. You just have that point of reference. Right. Um, he'll talk to you on the overheads. I'll set your audio. You ready to do this? I think so. All right. Thank you for your patience. We'll get if you Mark's ready, I'm ready. Yeah, I think he's ready. You too. Mark? All right, we're ready in three, two, one, action. Hi. Welcome to our show again. I'm glad that you're watching still and interested in China painting and all the things that we do. We're going to work a little bit on the uh, wild rose so that we can get the beginners started the way they should. They really need to know everything they need to finish the project. Now earlier we talked about first fire and now we're going to talk about second fire. This is our project. It is a fan plate. And it has a, a naturalistic rose, and we did discuss um, how you draw these in and so forth. This one was started on the um, fan plate, and then we put something new in it. This is something that we call a design device. Now, design devices just simply mean that you are going to put something in that is going to Add to your design, fill your design out. It's one way of doing a background without doing a lot of excess work, without putting a lot of um, carving, which we will get into in a little bit. The carving is sort of implied here. We have some implied shapes back here uh, that we have put in that has made it look like it's been carved, but it's just simply been painted in. We painted this in so that um, the beginners can start learning carving. So this is kind of a simple way of getting at the carving for the background. This was done on second fire, actually, okay? Now this is what, this is a ribbon, as you can see. The ribbon is going through the design. And here we have leaf shapes on the outside. A 
we are getting our darks in between the little petals. As you can see right here, we have the, the dark coming in between the petals. Here's our ribbon and we pulled some leaf shapes through the ribbon. Some of them just kind of filter in between behind the um, leaf shapes. You use a very small brush like a number two and get that number two in there. This, let me take a number two and show you that we're going to use like a number two to get this in there. Okay, and we're going to bring that number two brush into these really small areas right in between these, these uh, stem shapes in here. We have to paint it a couple of times. This is done with a fast drying medium. It is um, what we call the preamp to wet grounding. Wet grounding is something where you just take the paint, your powder paint, and you mix it with a fast drying medium so that you get lots of color, okay? And you just take a very small brush in this case and come back in between these really small areas and then you take a little larger brush. This would be our number 12. This is large enough to take care of everything that we need out here where the ribbon comes out into full out here and through here and through here, okay? So you're going to use this little brush to get these small shapes like this back here. You'll have to paint it a couple of times to get it dark enough. It may need another coat even because it just on this uh, slick surface, it may not get all the surface covered. The next fire you would have to put deck lac resist on all of the flowers and all of the leaves and everything so that you could paint over all of this. Paint uh, a thick coat on all of it and then use a small hat pin. The hat pin is our mainstay for a lot of things. You'll see this right here. You see that little dot right there? That's the top of the hat pin. It's used to pick the, the resist off and you have to lift underneath the resist and pick it up and pull it off. Okay, but then when you're done you have this design where you need to paint in your shadows and things like that and work up the, your painting. But for the first two fires you're going to work with all of this. That's your background, okay? And it's a, a strong color so you're going to need lots more uh, lots more paint and so forth, and it's gonna take a couple of extra fires to get it like this. Wet grounding is very convenient, very handy, and it, you'll find that you'll use it a lot more than you will dry grounding, which we will get into at another time. But dry grounding is something that you don't wanna start out with in the beginning. You wanna always use wet grounding in the beginning because it's easy, and it's more controllable, and it's less messy. You have to have less supplies. Okay, now once we've got our design on here like this, we have our choice as to whether or not we want to put a background on here or whether we want to paint our shadows in and our details. To paint the details and the shadows works very nicely. And the background will be uh, a marbleized uh, technique that I will explain a little bit later. Okay, now we have our brushes, we have our, our little scroller and so forth. You need the scroller and your number two shader and a number six shader. This is the next number six shader versus the number two shader. As you can see, the difference in the size of these brushes, okay? Now our number four shader, we can use for the painting of the flower. Once you've got your black on, you don't see uh, a need to get into these little detail areas right in here because these little areas actually have been painted with the dark. So you just need to shade this, this color. You're going to use a semi-drying to open medium to paint. Work your brush a little bit and you're going to put blue. This is 
our medium blue on the brush. We're going to take that first and we're going to make our shadow area, okay? Here's our shadow. You can reshape the petals by painting over the top like this and work that color down into the flower. Think about how that shadow should be cast on the flower. and get just this much painted on there, okay? A little more shadow for this flower down here at the bottom, okay? We're gonna turn the plate around a little bit and feed that color underneath the leaves like so. A little more blue, maybe. This is a little darker area. Okay. Our painting looks like this. A little more blue for the darkest areas. We're going to come back into the deepest areas of the shadow now that we've got the medium value shadow in there. We're going to come up next to the leaf and put a little bit of shadow underneath there. Shadows are not the easiest things to understand sometimes. Just realize how the shadow is cast. Understand that you're going to have to have a deep shadow and a softer shadow, and that would be your medium value shadow as it goes away from the shadow. It gets darker up next to the object, and then as it moves away, it starts to gray and soften. Same way here, you have a leaf that comes over the top of this. You can paint that and then Paint right there where it comes up next to the, the leaf itself and then soften the shadow as it comes away. This will make this, uh, uh, this perspective be push that back because of the uh, aerial conception where you are putting your blue on. The blue is causing that to set back a little bit. Right away this flower jumps up on the top. That's our main flower. This is the one that we call the prima donna or the center of attention, the main attraction. Now we take the color out of the brush a little bit. There will be a little bit of blue in there, but it won't hurt anything. We're going to take some of the soft rose We're going to paint this flower a little bit darker and reshape the petals just a little bit. Remember that this one is being foreshortened. Put a little bit of pink on that one as it comes up next to this flower. Add a little pink in here. And take our wipeout tool. Sharpen up some of the lines right here on the edge.
Okay. Okay. Now come back to this flower that's underneath. We're going to add a little bit of color on here down the edge of that shadow. Soften it as it goes back into the flower a little. Tap it with your finger just to soften it on that edge because we want that edge to be soft as well. Even though you're putting pink in and you want the flower to be pink, you want to remember that this would come out lighter on the edge because the light of, would be hitting that edge. Okay. Okay. Now we'll come to the main flower. We're going to start in the center and we're going to pull a little dark down around the center and then work it out just a little bit as it comes out to the edge. This edge is flattened out a little bit by the uh, color that we put underneath. We're going to turn that around and put a little bit of a turn back on that flower like so. And then we'll lighten it by touching it with our finger. Just lift up, push down and lift up. A little more color toward the center. Okay. Maybe a little more underneath the the turn back over here. And our flower begins to look like this. Okay, we're going to pull that color underneath that center because the center actually pulls up onto the flower just a little bit. It comes up over the top of the petal. Don't worry about getting the color on it if you get some color on it because it's just a, a little bit of color and you can actually, since it's been fired, all you're going to do is come back and just clean it out a little bit. This petal lays underneath this petal. So we're going to darken it just a little bit so that it brings it back up. This one also has a turn back. Our turn back is here, but you can barely see it. We can soften that turn back like so and then bring that shape back a little bit so that it comes over the top. And then you just lift up a little bit of color right there or soften it with a brush. If you prefer, just soften it a little bit so that it's not too strong. And then take our pink again, our soft rose. This is a lovely color. Very strong color, really, you know, because it is a gold content color. Soft rose and all those colors, remember, like violet and um, our rubies and elderberry, things like that, you know, mauve, lilac, French lilac. It is, um, these are all gold content colors. They are lovely. but they're also more expensive than the regular colors. You're paying for that gold. Okay. Lighten just this area right in here. Remember that the petals are not flat. 
you have to make sure that you make those petals look soft and give a little roundness to them because they're not flat. Okay? Now we're going to use this same small brush right here. We're going to take a little of this pink color. We're going to come back to these little flowers that we already did here. Some of those flowers are going to have turn backs as well. And we can make a turn back by just adding a little color to that edge. You can always add a darker color to this color if you wish, if it would make the color look stronger. But just adding the color on top is enough to make that color jump up off the plate. This is a very, very nice pink. It has a lot of strength. Put a little bit in the center right down here next to the the center of the flower right down near the, the uh, little pollens and all that kind of thing that you've got painted in there. Just paint a little bit down toward the center so that you can get that color stronger. Okay, here's our, our pipe. How about that? Pretty nice, huh? Okay. Now we're going to take a little bit more and we're going to come into the one down at the bottom. It's been kind of overlooked. We don't want to make it too strong because the most important one is flower number one. Remember? Flower number one is first. Flower number two is almost as important. Flower number three is just kind of added decoration. And this one up here at the top needs a little attention too, but not too much. Because remember, this is your main flower. This is the one you want to concentrate on, okay? We're going to paint this one down here at the bottom with a little more attention to the edge because it is going away from us and it will give it a little more strength. Now we're going to that little flower that's up at the top. See that? We're moving some color into the center of that flower. But then we've got to accent the ends of that petal as well. One of the things that happens with these little flowers when they're spent is that the color sometimes deepens, but it begins to look kind of oldish. You can tell that it's not the way that it was when it was fresh. It becomes kind of wrinkled and whatever, you know, and it, it doesn't have the light on it that the other, when it was younger, newer, young, like all things, you know. And we'll wipe out with the wipe out tool just a little bit. And then we will take the soft brush when we get done and go back to it and soften that light, okay? Got to turn it upside down now, you know, so that we can get at this flower because it's way down here on the bottom. And we will take this and just pull that little bit of color right in, the, in toward the center. This one has an odd shape to it, which is nice because it looks, you know, it looks nice to have a little odd shape here. Okay. 
here we go. This is the way it looks. Let's take a look at that. Here's our little flower at the top, right up here, right up at the top. You notice that it has these odd little ragged edges here and there. It is tearing away. It is, it is going to fall off of the plant eventually. Now we're going to soften the brush with our, our, our uh, sable brush by just coming back to that little wipeout that we did, the quick little wipeout, and then we're going to turn it around like this and pull back into that so we just soften the edges so that it looks like this, okay? The next thing that we have to pay attention to is um, we're going to have um, a little bit of, of gray in between these when we get done because we're going to do a stippled background that is kind of like, um, it's uh, a special technique that is done with saran wrap and um, um, matte paint. In this case, it will be blue-gray. I have some blue-gray on my palette, so I'm going to take the blue-gray and paint it in between these little flower petals because it's kind of difficult to try to get into a real small space with these colors. So we're just going to paint it in and fill that dark, that little area right in there with gray. Okay. Then we'll come back with the wipeout tool and we will just come back to this one little flower down here. We're going to pay a little attention to him and just give it a little highlight so that we reshape that flower underneath. It gives it a little something extra. This one, we could just put a tip at the top and even change it so that it has a little bit of a turn back forming right here. Okay, and then we can push that back into the flower. Okay, a little more here where the flower petal comes in. Okay, and then we will just tap it with our finger to soften wherever you have a buildup or something like that, you need to do something like that. Now let's take a real close look at this guy right here. Okay, see how much better he looks? Okay, we're going to come around that edge just a little bit with the wipeout tool and give it a little bit of a ruffle on some of the edges. Okay, and push out any color that got into the center hitting it with the edge, the point edge of the wipeout tool, okay? Okay? There we go, there we go. All right, now we're gonna take some of this paint out of the brush. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want a little bit of yellow-brown we're gonna go back to the middle of this thing or the centers of the flower, okay? We can start anywhere. Put a little bit of yellow brown in this one. This one won't have lots and lots of color because like I said, it's a spent flower so you're not gonna have lots of color. Just blush a little bit of it in on that one. Okay, down near the Calyx, see where the calyx is showing through right here? Right here, here's the, the little center right up here. 
okay? We're going to put a little bit of the yellow brown in that center. Turn around to the other one over here. This one's completely spent. It's just showing the center is all. We're going to put a little bit of yellow brown in that because it will show up a little bit better. It may not be this dark, but we're going to make it show a little bit more. Okay? Then we're going to take some of the yellow brown and we're going to come back to our main flower. Here we go. Here's our main flower. We're going to brush that color into the center like so. Leaving that little bit at the top in light because we know that the light is going to be hitting that area. Take some more yellow brown and come down into this one. The shadow being on this side, you would then bring that color in on this side. This is how you manage to get that light just right, okay? There's our center. Now we're going to go to this one at the bottom. His center is actually much more ovicular. It's facing downward and it's hard to see right now because it's still pretty pale. So we're going to take some yellow brown and we're going to turn this around so that we can get at the bottom right here and we're going to place that color on this side of that center. This is what our piece looks like now. The yellow brown is a stronger color than you think. But you know, it needs a little bit of brown to enhance it. So we're going to take a little bit of brown on our little scroller. Just brown. And we're going to come to that center, which is already painted in. We have that little nodule. See that little nodule right there? Right here, right here, and right here, and right here. We're going to come into that little nodule and we're going to enhance the little, um, I don't know what you call them, little pollen things. You know, they, they have these little whiskers and you just lay that brush in there and start pulling some little whiskers. Make them a little bit on the short side. Don't make them too long. Make them vary in size. In other words, what we're doing is we're taking this brush and we are doing little things like this. Here's our center right here. And we're going to pull from that center Notice the variation of line and skipping spaces. You don't want this to be too strong. You want this to, to come uh, from that center point and leave variations in there so it's more interesting. Okay, so we've got a skip space here in the middle where you're not going to see it as much. We're going to pull a few at the top. Okay. And we're going to pull and skip, remember? We're going to turn this around because this is in the darkest area. And the darkest area needs to have special attention, all right? 
We're going to pull that little section in here so that this gets darker at the top. This is our flowers now. That little bit of detail is amazing because, boy, it sure makes a difference in how that flower comes out. Okay, now we're going to do, go down to the bottom one. And remember this one, being as it's, being as it's um, facing away from us, we need to pull that short right in here. This is where the darkest area is, right in here. So we will pull short ones right here. You're using the, the tip of the brush to get these little spokes around the center of the wheel. It's basically what it is, isn't it? It's pretty round. So we're going to get a couple more down in here and then stop. Don't overdo it. We don't want whiskers all over everything. Okay, now we're going to go up to the top. We've got these two at the top. Just because they're spent flowers doesn't mean we should ignore them. We want to make sure we spend a little time with them because we want these flowers to really do something for the painting. Okay, so we're going to take this one at the very top first. This is it right here, okay? We're going to turn this around so we can get at it because, as I said before, the main thing that you remember about china painting is that you need to pull your brush toward you, okay? This is not easy. You're going to need something to rest your finger on, if it be the counter that you're working on or what, but it needs to have a resting space, and you're going to come into that flower the same way you did the others. Pull out a little bit more out here on this edge because we want those pollens to sit up on the top. Okay. You may not see these little things in this space right here because this space is shortened by the, the calyx and everything else that's kind of in the way. So we're just going to do it this way. And this one is the next one. This one in this corner is the next one. This is a little bit more tricky because this one has more pollens in front. So what we're going to do still, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull these little, these little stems or whatever you want to call them. They're, they're little tiny uh, center stems that balance the little pollens on the end. Pull these out like so. You'll barely see them in the center, you know, because of the way that all of this faces and everything. And you're not going to see a whole lot in that one because, first of all, like I said, we want to spend lots of attention on this main flower, and everything else is going to be secondary. Go back and just sharpen that up a little bit in the center. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take the tip end of that brush with some brown. And what we're going to do is make all the little pollens with the tip end of the brush. You need to take your brush like this and put your arm on the side of your plate just a little bit over here like this. You're going to take this and put that those little dots on it. If you have something like this, this little uh, wheel that we have here for balancing your piece, that sometimes helps <clears throat> because you have uh, a resting area where you can work and not get your hand in everything, okay? We're going to start making those little pollens at the top. Just like this. See that? Those little bitty pollens on the top, they're hard to see 
but very necessary. Put some down in here, just a little bit. This one, the same thing. You're just going to have a little bit of it uh, uh, obliterated by the background that we put in already. But we can do the same thing. We're going to put a whole bunch right here in this one. Okay, then we'll put a few out here. Okay, this is what makes the, the um, wild rose so pretty because it has that center and the center is actually lacy, absolutely lacy in, in the center. It's gorgeous. And it's the center that we're working on now is our main flower where we will get a few of these little guys in here. This is always something nice. Now remember, another thing that you want to remember when you're working on these guys is that you don't get carried away with all these things and forget that this needs an irregular center. You need some irregularities in your center by moving that brush back and forth. You can get pollens that look like they're just stacked on top of each other almost. See how that happens? See how that works? It's not going to be super dark, but you want to lay that, that point in there and lay it in there long enough that the brush will have a chance to dispel the paint. Remember not to go all the way around the center. This is not pretty, but it is pretty to have a couple of them on the outside edge. In fact, it's prettier. It makes it look more lacy. Okay, here we go. There we are. It looks really pretty special, doesn't it? Those little details make the wild rose what it is. Fabulous, actually. The wild rose has sometimes been called um, um, Rose of Sharon. It's quite beautiful, very classy little flower. So don't sell the, the wild rose short. It is spectacular, worth every ounce of effort. Okay. Okay. The one at the bottom, we want to focus on these at the top because these will go away from us, but we're going to put a few out here. We just want to make them more open. These down here will be um, closer in, so we want to make some of them come down into the, the center a little bit more. Don't be afraid to put a couple of them on the outside edge. You know, something like this on this second rose right here. You might see a couple of them out here. If we can get that, it's wet on wet. It's not exactly easy to paint wet on wet. Anyway, we can get this one going with all these little pollens.
then we've got to take a few and put them on the other side. Just remember that you don't want to do the whole thing all the way around. It becomes very busy and very monotonous if you do that. Okay, this is our piece right now, okay? Take a good look at what we've got here so far. It's beginning to look pretty spiffy. Okay. I'm going to clean out the brown now because I'm going to need this brush for something else. We need to get all the pink out of this one and the yellow, it has yellow brown in that from the centers. We're going to work on the leaves next. Now quite often when we paint our flowers and so forth, one of the things that we do in backgrounds is a wash and the wash will go through the flowers. We don't have to do that all the time. But what we can do is paint a little bit on the leaves and then add the green. Now what color would we like on those leaves? Well, I would suggest a little bit of yellow. This is a nice color to put on our leaves. And if we use a brush that's not too small, but not too big either, because we don't want a great big brush in this case, we're not doing the background, so we're going to use a small brush. And this is uh, number six. We'll take the yellow that we normally use. The tan is my favorite. I like tan because it's a little bit grayed and a little easier to see. We're going to take that color and put it on the leaves where we've left highlights. It will tend to warm up that cool color and add something to our leaves. Make them a little brighter. See that? See how much better that looks with that little bit of yellow? We don't have to paint it all the way out to the edge. What we need to do is make sure that there is color that goes through the lightest part where we've left our highlights. We're going to put that little bit of yellow in there. Okay. This is a fun thing to do, getting that little bit of yellow on there. Now, like I said, when we do washes, it usually covers the whole piece. But in this case, we're not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to paint this in like this, and the background is going to be the blue-gray. We can even touch one or two of these other leaves over here. Even though they don't have wipeouts or whatever, it's kind of nice to put a little bit of yellow on that. Just a touch. Then we'll go back to the ones that have been highlighted so that we can get all of the yellow on those leaves. Okay. There we go. It kind of warms things up a little bit. It does change everything a lot, you know, especially when you put the, the yellow on. It really makes it exciting. Now, we don't do this on everything because there are times when the rose is used for um, something more conventional or something, and you may, may or may not get a little bit of yellow into your leaf when you do a conventional design. Depends on the design and the color scheme that you have chosen, and so forth. This one just seemed like it, this, this was the right way to go with this. This is not a conventional design. This is what we call the naturalistic design. Now, again, I would, want to talk to you about the fact that we do have a design device on this in that we have a ribbon that leads the eye through the entire painting. Okay, here's our painting so far. This is what it looks like now. It's beginning to look quite a bit different than what it did a few minutes ago. It's amazing, too, how little paint we have to use. A vial of paint lasts a very long time, by the way. It, it takes very little paint to put on here. 
what we want to put on depending on what we're doing. If we're doing this kind of thing where it's wet grounded, you're going to use a lot more paint. But you're not going to use so much paint that it's going to be a tremendous amount of paint. It just takes more when you do wet grounding. This is our piece so far. Now we're going to take some green and uh, we'll probably take a little bit of dark green. This dark green is a real nice color. It has a little bit of yellow on the brush still. I'm not worried about the fact that we've got a little bit of color on the brush. We're going to take that green and we're going to get it down into the darkest shadows where the flower comes together with the leaf. We're painting wet on wet and sometimes that's a little risky so if if you feel like that it's uh, not something that you can do or you don't feel comfortable with it, fire it and then come back and do your shadows on your leaves. Take as many fires as you need. In the beginning, <laughs> I can remember one of my pieces taking months to do because I kept doing more firings on it because I wasn't sure how I was supposed to approach all of this. I think we all feel very intimidated when we first start out with a new media. We don't really know what to expect from it. So, consequently, we are more timid. Okay, we're going to take the tip of the leaf and add a little color on the tip. All right? But you can leave the tip if you like. If you feel like you want to put pink on the tip or a little bit of red on the tip, you can do that. It might make it a little busy, however, so you want to be careful about that. And remember, your main subject matter is the wild rose, not the leaf. So spend time with your wild rose, learning how to do the wild rose, not getting too experimental with colors on the leaf and so forth. Just stay with your greens, your yellows, things like that for a little bit until you get used to doing leaves and then go for it and try to go farther. Okay, this dark color also is a good color for us to finish off our spent rose. We'll take that color up into the green that is on the calyx and bring that color out a little bit. Remembering that you do have light up there so don't take all the light away from the calyx. Just get some dark on it and try to paint fairly dry. Painting too wet is one of the things that happens a lot with uh, with people that are just starting out and if you get it too dry or too wet I should say if you get it too wet then it runs and that's a very horrible situation because then it doesn't look good okay here we go so far this is the way it looks okay The green, if you put a little yellow on your leaf, another thing that happens when you put yellow on the leaf is you make it look softer. You make the color look much more soft, much more appealing. It's it's soft, nice color. So you can put that color in and this is the way that it begins to look. As you can see with that yellow, it does soften the green that we put on those leaves and it does soften the pink and everything. And the pink can be very harsh too if you're not careful. But we're going to finish these little guys up here a little bit. Do just a little bit. Be careful not to get into the paint that you've already put on the centers and, and all that kind of thing. Just get enough paint on there so that you can see that you've got this little um, spent flower up at the top. Again, I'm turning it around so that you can get that angle on the brush. We'll bring this color in to the center.
There we go. Make sure that you leave this one little straggler here. You may have to use your little wipeout tool from time to time. That's what it's for, there for. That's what it does. Get just a little teeny bit more oil. When you get a little more oil, you're just going to take your brush and tip it to the oil so that you don't get too much oil on it. And then lay it on the towel so that you can get a little bit of it wor worked out or work it on your tile and work it through the brush a little bit so that you can get that uh, color nice and strong in your brush so that it applies on your brush. Oh, here we go. Got a little edge right up here on the petal that we need to define. Sometimes when you're painting, you get some of the paint into it. Just define your petals as you go along so you don't forget about it. Okay, here's a little leaf right up here at the top. And we will just pull some of that color right down in here. Darken this one a little bit, even though it is on top. And this one is on the bottom. Then leave it. Go on to the next one. That's just an impressionistic leaf. Don't get too carried away with it. Okay, putting a little color on this leaf. This one is a leaf that is cupped up. A cupped leaf simply looks, well, I can cup it like this by putting a little bit of color on top of that lighter value and then take the point end of the wipeout tool and push up like this to open it up. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that is so fun. Here we go. There's our cupped leaf. Let me show you that cupped leaf. I'm going to take the back of this plate and put some color on there. I think this is something that we all need to learn extremely well, is that leaves do not all look flat. The leaf, okay, we're going to take this leaf and we're going to put in a cupped leaf, okay? This is our cupped leaf. And when it was painted originally, it was just this flat little shape like so. It comes like this. It cups up like this, okay? And then you have that point at the end. You can reshape and uh, reshape with a wipeout tool. And then what happens is this begins to get a little bit re, uh, misshapen. And so maybe at the time that you're doing this, you're going to be pulling this back like so. And maybe you've gotten highlights on this little leaf and so forth. But when you get ready to paint, you've got all this color on here and you're not quite sure where it's going, just take it from this end and give it a little curl back and then go like this. And what you'll get is a cupped leaf. This being the cup of the leaf. Okay. And of course you don't want all of this in here. I'm just demonstrating it a little bit heavy so that you can see it. And then you have this shape 
that comes back in here. Like this, there's your leaf. This one can be reshaped in this way so that you have a little shape on the outside that might look like this. There's your leaf, all right? Now, that's what's happening with um, this little leaf right here, okay? Let's pull that right here and take a good look at that. This is the leaf right here. It's just a little leaf, but you're beginning to see that it's starting to cup up into the, the shape, okay? Now we're going to take this brush again with the color and we're going to go ahead with this leaf section we've got another one right here that tends to, if, if you know about leaves, you know that they're not flat either, and they tend to come up and curl over a little bit because they are made sort of like a quilt in that where the, the little veins, veins tend to ruffle the, the leaf a little bit, they also tend to make it puff over. Okay? And this one needs to have a little bit of turn back in here maybe as well. We can decide whether we want it here, which I think is best. So you've got your little turn back on there by just using the, the wedge end of your wipeout tool, you can come back in and just draw that little wipe, uh, that little turn back right back in there, okay? And you might want to sharpen this up just a little bit. Here is a little dot of light from a highlight. Okay, just, just because it probably bounces off the leaf just a little bit. Thinking about your shadows are very important. Okay. A little color in here, because this leaf is falling underneath the main flower. You want to put that back on the end of the leaf and make sure that that gets all the way out there. Okay. And again, we need to open up that highlighted area just a little bit. All right, and then we'll take the dark area again and pull that into this leaf that lays underneath the secondary flower. Pull that all the way under the petal. All the way out to the end and then take some more of the dark color because they need a shadow of this leaf over here. Okay. We want this one to lay underneath this one. 
We'll take almost all the yellow off that leaf and leave this one in the light coming forward. Take a little bit of the green and pull that down at the end. Okay. Now we're going to have to go back to that leaf and push it up over the top with the end of your wipeout tool. You're going to take the wedge end and you're going to push up. And give you a little more here. And then highlight this little bit of area right here because this is where the leaf is coming out into the light. Go up to the top, get a little bit of a highlight right there in the center of your leaf. A little bit on this one. And then tap it out with your finger. This one also gets a little bit of light We'll pull this light right here on the end, right on the tip of the leaf, and leave it. Here is your wild rose. Now, we're going to take that little liner brush. If you want a little bit of red on this, this is the time to do it. We can take rosy violet of iron we can come into that leaf and take a little bit of red and pull that down on the tip of the leaf here we go If you decide to do a little bit of red on your leaf, then you want to do it on another leaf. This red is not going to be really super, super dark. This is just a little bit of red added to the leaf. And that little bit of red is going to fire soft because we're working wet on wet. This is the advantage to working wet, wet on wet, but it is tricky and, I mean, at first especially because until you get used to the paint and the brushes and working with the paint is on a non-porous surface, you want to be able to get in there and get just a little tiny bit of red. A little added to the center of the leaf helps the leaf. Just enhance it. Don't draw 
the leaf veins ever. It's not a good thing. It's not a, a good policy. You just want to enhance it. Okay. Rosy Violet of Iron is a rosy color. It also has a certain amount of gold content in it. So it's going to work a little different than a regular red. Regular reds are normally more iron. This one probably has a certain amount of iron in it also to make it red. But it is a rosy color. So whatever else is in it changes the color. Okay, not a lot, and don't do it to every leaf, but you can add little bits of pink here and there. Remembering not to get carried away with all of your details is a, probably one of the hardest things that there is in China painting, because everybody wants to do those delicious details. They just can't wait to get to them. In fact, it's so, so tough that when you see a study, you want to do what is finished and not wait for the finish. Okay. Wherever you think you need a little enhancement or a direction for your color, because your color too can be uh, a directional device. And it can help to draw the eye through the painting. As I said, don't get carried away. You don't want all of the leaves to have red on them, but you do want enough. If you're going to put some in, you want just enough so that it enhances the flower. Okay? This is our details that we need for our painting. We don't want to go any farther than this. This is enough. We want this to be simple and subtle. We want this to carry off the message that we want to convey. We want something that is soft. Notice how luminous the colors are. Look carefully at that blue and how it illuminates this area. If you hadn't done your highlights the way you should have on first flyer, you couldn't get this. All of this has been illuminated by just leaving enough highlight. It's important that you remember that. Always leave more light than you need on first fire. Look at the painting now. It's exciting. It's moving. It's got plenty of depth in it right now. The background isn't finished yet. That would be another fire. And we will explain that. Okay? But right now, this is what we've got. Now this, this flower is not the only, it's not done just this way, obviously. We also have something called a conventional design, and we did talk about this on another uh, showing, viewing. This was one that we started with, with our wild rose. This is what our wild rose looks like on a conventional plate. I prepared this one so that, again, you could be reminded that this is done with guidelines. Guidelines are like a transfer. They, they are a transfer. They're like a decal. But they're a, t a transfer that is just the lines only. You have to put everything else in yourself. And I, I re really encourage you not to go for a full decal unless you absolutely have to. Because doing decals, you might as well not think about doing china painting. You just put the decals on and you're done. You know, This is something that's going to take a little more time. But you notice that we've got a couple of fires on this piece, 
and it has built up this design so that you can see how the design comes together. But when you first look at it, what you're looking at is this little section right here, and it has so little on there that you can barely see it. It's supposed to be that way. You're not supposed to be able to see the lines when you're finished. And you notice that when we get to this point, you're not noticing the lines as much because we've got color on it. Now, like I said, this has had a couple of fires on it already, and we have built up all the design and so forth. We have left highlights in the leaves so that if we wanted to put some color on the top, we could. But normally in a conventional design, we don't do quite as much in that respect. Instead, we would fin uh, be finishing the piece to look more like this. So that when you are actually going this far, you have got several fires on this because you put your background in. You put your details in on this area right here. You can see the details. And you can see that the background has been painted on. Well, there's one more thing that we put on. It's luster. This is mother of pearl luster. We put that on because that's where we want our gold to go. Okay? But we also have luster in here. If we wanted to put the luster on and nothing else, we could. Mother of pearl is basically whitish in color. Like you can see on the outside, this is what it looks like with nothing underneath it. But when we put it on, we want it to be uh, more luminescent than this. And we've painted it. So what we have to do is go back with another fire and put another coat of mother of pearl on it in order to bring that up. Then we put the gold over the top of this. And if we want, we can even cover this uh, blue part right in here. Instead of having it blue, what if we decided we wanted to do black satin? Black satin is something special. It comes in a little pouch like this. This is the powdered paint that you get in a via, uh, for one, one pa uh, uh, purchase, okay? And here it is. This uh, black satin um, will cover this with the paint that we have underneath. We have enough of, uh, of a tint that we call a tooth. We can put that tooth on there. We've got the blue on. If we decided we want to do the whole thing in blue, we could. But it'd be more exciting if we put the black on there, wouldn't it? OK, so enhancing your piece is what we're after. I want to thank you for watching today, to working on this. We're going to go on to the next fire, and I will explain some more things that you can do with your background that will make it very fun and exciting. Wait till you see the next fire. It's going to be so fun and so exciting, you're going to want to get started right away, okay? But this one has done as much as you can do on this fire. You can't do anything more to it because it's still got wet paint on it. So you're not going to be able to do anything more to it until you get ready to do your background. And the background will take one fire alone. That's it. One fire more and it's finished. Okay. I can't, I can't hope for you more that you'll do more of these flowers. Just because they're the beginning flower doesn't mean that that's the end. This is just the beginning, and it's going, to, it's going to be thrilling when you try this on a box like I have here, or you can put it on a vase. It's beautiful on a vase. Uh, you can put these flowers around a scene. They're beautiful. Try lots of different things with these things. Come back next time. Happy painting. Hoping for better times, lots of better times. Thank you. Very good. That was fabulous. Did Thanks we? On the back. Done a good job. Did we get on and within our time? No, you ran about fifteen minutes over. Oh dear. That's okay. Um, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. I I was supposed to have the clock here, and it isn't on, so I don't know what time it is.